Hi YouTube, welcome to my sacred space. My name is Lauren Victoria. I'm a mental health therapist and intuitive energy worker, and I specialize in healing and wellness through the intersection of mental health and spirituality. Uh, if you are unaware, I am currently living in Mazatlan, Mexico, and a while ago I was on my Instagram and I asked you guys to share any questions that you might have about my experience, about living abroad in general, and I'm going to answer them here today, so stay tuned if you want to learn more. So I'm gonna hop right into it because I'm really not one for the long intro. Is there any detrimental weather there? I've been thinking about moving there. Typically, the worst weather that we deal with is just heat. It's just hot as hell. <laughs> in the summer, at least here in Mazatlan, where I am, um, like 85 degrees when you wake up type of hot. And I said that there's been like one hurricane watch since I've moved here, um, but it ended up just being really heavy rains. So there is a rainy season, which is typically in the summer and we might get a lot of rain at night um, a little bit of flooding but like nothing that stays flooded for days at least not in my area it's very temperate uh, if you will so what are the pros and cons of moving abroad that you've experienced so far so you guys know I've lived abroad before or if you don't you know now you know I've lived abroad before I used to live in Spain and I think that in general like across the board in other countries I have a higher quality of life um, just because things are less expensive and I've also worked less when I move right because things are less expensive when I was living in Spain I worked 16 hours a week <laughs> and now that I'm living in Mexico I, I work at most 20 hours a week um, so I just have a lot more free time and obviously that's a huge pro. Uh, the food is healthier. A lot of food that we eat in America is literally illegal <laughs> in other countries um, because it's like, you know, factory made, uh, genetically modified food that these corporations and industries are using to make production cheaper so that they can maximize on their dollar, you know, capitalism, blah, 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 right? I find that Mexico and I found that Spain had a lot healthier, uh, more natural and locally sourced foods. Even the snack foods because the sugar is a higher quality or they can't use as many food colorings like that type of thing I know that there is danger in all corners of the world but I personally feel safer in Mexico than I did in America uh, especially as somebody who's living in Chicago um, I don't fear gang violence I don't fear being trafficked I don't fear mass shooting like that type of thing um, as I did have to think about constantly when I was in the States. Uh, another really big pro for me is the weather. I have seasonal depression. I have ever since I was a little girl and I just know that it's so important for me to be where the sun is and we get sun like 363 days a year down here <laughs> in Mazatlan so absolutely it's gonna be a pro. And I think that last but not least, the biggest pro for me right now is the sense of like community and like society, you know? Uh, America is very individualistic. What I love about Mexico is just how unified they are as a culture. Uh, people are a lot nicer, warm and welcoming. And it's, it's so normal to just see a family of like three generations just out to dinner on a Tuesday. <laughs> like it is so, easy and natural for that to happen it's just a very tight-knit community and i'm very grateful for the people that i'm around now about the cons if i have to be really honest there aren't that many um i guess that i do miss the internet like i miss <laughs> let me be clear they have wi-fi they have internet down here but at least in this corner of mexico that i'm in um it is it is not uncommon to not be able to find a website for a particular uh, business or to find a business on Google Maps but they don't have a phone number like a lot of things are still word of mouth a lot of things are still Facebook which I had complete <laughs> it took a, a little getting used to to not have that like very 
technology center accessibility but it's cool because again it forces me to go out into the community versus living in the states or living in chicago like if i wanted to order everything to my house i could literally be a recluse those services are still here to some extent but it's just more efficient to go outside which you know i enjoy so damn look my con ended up being a pro anyway <laughs> although i speak pretty good Spanish and I'm at a proficient level. Um, there is a fear and an anxiety that I have sometimes when, you know, wanting to go to certain events because I, I don't know how well I'll be able to understand or if I'll be understood. And it kind of keeps me like on the, the fringes, I feel like of really getting into community. So that is difficult at times. The biggest, biggest con is the lack of diversity in food, just because coming from Chicago, I'm very spoiled. And if I want Thai, Ethiopian, Italian, and Polish all within the same week, I can very much do that. <laughs> I can very much get that and it will all be authentic and delicious. That's not flying in Mazalan. We don't have that much outside influence, which is cool because it's it shows the culture is being preserved, but like, you know, I'm a foodie and I, w I want to go to Japan on my plates. <laughs> and they don't really have that many opportunities out here. We are losing light quickly. Okay, did you have all your finances for your new place before you moved? Um, yes and no. I paid for my Airbnb up front. Children! I did pay for my first month of airbnb before i got here so that i could buy my time to look for apartments um i never stopped working so even in that month i was still making enough to pay for a deposit for the next place please buki mommy's talking <laughs> you want to say hi come here yeah, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> okay Basically, the cost of living is low, so you don't need to save up a whole bulk of money um, to be able to afford to live down here. How hard was it to get your visa and which are you on? Also, how long did the move take from decision, I guess, to execution? Um, it's kind of a long story, but to make that long story short, um, I'm on a tourist visa. Those. I had two of those for 180 days and actually now I'm in the process of waiting for my visa to expire because Mexico is, well Mazatlan, is still honoring the regularization process which is a video, a different video I'll make if y'all are interested where basically you don't have to leave the country um, and go through the process in your hometown of going to the consulate and you know proving solvency and all that other stuff if your tourist visa expires while you're in the country and you qualify then you can just stay here and get permanent residency i'm sorry temporary residency which is good for up to four years which is what i will be applying for and to answer the second part how long did the move take from like you know the brainstorm to the execution uh, I'm pretty sure that I had decided, you know, maybe around December of 2021 and by June 2022, I was here in Mazatlan. <sighs> by June 2022, I was here in Mazatlan. But to be honest, the only reason that I waited that long is because I was in graduate school and my graduation was in June. Had it been up to me, you know, completely, I probably would have been out earlier. Had I been able to break my lease, I probably would have been out earlier. It doesn't take long for me to up and shift my life, if you've noticed. <laughs> Did your apartment come with furniture? Do you speak Spanish fluently? Uh, yes, so most rentals here come completely furnished. I'm talking down to silverware, towels, blankets, like everything. Um, because this is a tourist area, so a lot of places and rentals are geared towards, you know, uh, being a turnkey property. I just made a YouTube video where I was luxury apartment hunting. Check out that link, it'll be in one of these corners um, and you can see, get an idea of like exactly how furnished they are. Y si, yo hablo español casi con fluidez, pero es muy difícil para comprender porque los 
hispanohablantes hablan muy rápido. Entonces, no me entiendo todo. <laughs> Did you have to save up before? Will you have to come back to the States from time to time? Again, I really didn't have to save money because I was saving money in the move itself. I stopped paying car insurance. I stopped paying my car note. I didn't have uh, a lease anymore. So I, I saved money immediately by moving. <laughs> and as far as coming back and forth to the States, I only had to do that um, once when I needed to re renew my visa. And again, now I'm in the, the process of getting the temporary residency. So I don't have to come back. I would like to because I have family there, but um, Mazatlan isn't really a great airport hub yet. So it's kind of a hassle to get anywhere, but Phoenix, thank God I have family there. But like getting back to Chicago would be an eight hour plus ride and I'm just not interested in that right now. Have you discovered any pole studios? So if you guys don't know, I pole danced hard, often, a lot, <laughs> from like 2019 to 2021, 2022. Pole dance was how, like a huge part of my somatic, like physical body healing journey. I've dealt with like dissociation for a long time and dance really helped me, but long story short to answer that question there are pole studios here but you're not going to find pole dance it's more like pole fitness they have definitely drawn a line in the sand and that's a problem in itself in like pole dance you know trying to distance itself from segs work um and trippers yeah <laughs> there are people who still find this like elitist split between the two and i don't know if that's the essence of why Mexico doesn't really have dance studios but yeah I want to dance I did not show up to work out I came to trick myself into working out by dancing around for hours so <laughs> it's kind of unsatisfying but it's okay I found another way how much would you estimate a person should have saved before becoming an expat there Again, y'all, it really just depends on how you plan to live. But if you are downsizing, aka cutting expenses and, you know, on paper you'll be saving money, you really don't need a savings. Uh, I'm sorry. I guess enough, you know, depending on how you like to live, have enough for an Airbnb, right? That first month so you can go looking for apartments and then maybe save for a security deposit in the price range that you would like to pay. But I do believe that, especially if, again, you're continuing to work, I think you'll be fine either way. Now, I do stress that it's important to consider the type of lifestyle you want to live because I have friends paying $500 for, you know, two bedroom apartments. But I also have friends who are paying $2,000 for apartments because they want different amenities or they want different furnishings. So it's really just based on how you want to live. And you can figure that out by going, you know, into the market and looking at what housing prices look like. Look at a Facebook marketplace and I forget the website, but there is another website. I'll put it on the screen where you can go and look up the cost of things like a, a bottle of milk or a ticket to the movie theaters. And yeah, that'll be really helpful for you. Okay, you guys, so that was all the questions that I got. Um, my first round of FAQs. If y'all have more questions, as always, you can reach out to me on social media or on my website. I am offering astro cartography readings now. So that means that I look at your birth chart and I look at general astrology to get an idea of the planetary energies that, you know, influence your experience around the world. So if you're thinking about relocating, or if you have a vacation and you're trying to plan some things, then uh, use code RISE, R-I-S-E, for $15 off of your reading. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. Bye.